everyone, welcome back. We are. This is our fifth lesson in fluid mechanics, and today we shall be covering Newton's second law. Well, if you remember from the continuity equation or from the mass of the system, you get this equation here where d dt, the mass of the system, is equal to d dt, integral of the control system of density with respect to volume, which is equal to partial derivative with respect to time, of the control volume density with respect to volume plus the integral of the control surface of rho times the velocity dotted to the normal vector of the control surface all with respect to dA. So if you recall this is the equation for the derivative of the mass of a system. Well in if you recall from physics the sum of the forces of a system is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the momentum of the system. So, well, doesn't d dt of a mass look very familiar? So, we're going to get sum of the forces of the system is equal to d dt of the integral of the system, a velocity vector times density with derivative with respect or integrate with respect to the control with the volume of the system is equal to partial derivative with respect to time of the integral of the control volume velocity rho dv plus the integral of the control system velocity rho velocity dot n d a here is the sum of the forces of the system where we get the time rate of change of the linear momentum of the system, the force, is equal to the time rate of change of the linear momentum of the contents of the control volume, so I'm inside the control volume itself, plus the net rate of flow of linear momentum through the control surface. That is what this equation here is telling you. Well, this can be simplified further. Let's say we're operating at steady state. Well, if you recall, steady state, that means any derivative with respect to time, zero. So sum of the forces of the system is only equal to the control surface integral. dA. So now here at steady state, this is the control surface integral for the sum of the forces, where the sum of the forces is equal to the net rate of flow of linear momentum through the control surface. Well, let's simplify it earlier, or more. Let's say we're only dealing with average velocities. Right? What do you do with average velocities? Well, then the sum of the forces is equal to the density of the system times the velocity of, this is the surface, normal vector, let's say velocity is going off of this, for the velocity to leave the system, you must be dealing with the horizontal component, or not horizontal component, you must be dealing with the component that is parallel to the normal vector, because any fluid that's perpendicular to the normal vector, well, that's not going to go anywhere. That's just going to hit the top of the control control volume and not leave the system. So you need the stuff that's perpendicular or parallel to the normal vector. So if this is theta, we would have V, and if you remember, you have V dot N, the germ's dot product is equal to magnitude of V, magnitude of N, cosine theta. So you get V cosine theta, because N is a normal vector, because that's that V then v dot n is going to be v cosine theta, and dA, let's assume we know what this area is, so a. So this becomes rho v squared cosine squared theta times the area of your control surface. This is if we're dealing with average velocities. Average velocities mean the velocity is going to be constant, it's not going to change with respect to your area, it's just, it's like it's four, it's three, it's whatever. Densities, we're also going under the assumption that density does not change with respect to area. As a result, everything comes out. Just do it algebraically. So here we go. These are the sum of the forces with respect to 
the mass system through linear momentum relationship and the steady state version of it and the average velocities version of it. For this course, we will be dealing with average velocities and I will be right back as I will be creating a problem for us to solve. All right, so here's a problem for us. I have some cap here, it's attached to some hose. There's fluid coming in at one end, coming out the other. We want to know the what is the force to hold cap in place. You might have noticed I increased the thickness of my pen, just my marker keeps getting lost, so I had to deal with it. So we're going to assume average velocities to make this example problem simple and just explain the point. Assume average velocities. And then we're going to assume steady state. Now, if you want to do a problem without uh, average velocities, uh, on my previous video, lesson four, I did the flow through a pipe. If you want to analyze the forces caused by that flow, I'd recommend plugging, going back, getting those velocities from my lesson four video and plugging them in here. I will, at the very end, I will copy down the equation you should get for if you want to check it. I'm not going to do it here in this video because I'll set it up, but after that, it's just math. So, and that your me mechanics is done and the integration is actually pretty long. So I'm just going to do this. All right. So remember steady state. And so we're going to be dealing with the sum of the forces is equal to the integral of the control surface v rho v dot n d a. So we're dealing with average velocities, which means v is constant with respect to the area, rho is constant with respect to the area, v dot n is constant with respect to the area. So you just get the sum of the forces is equal to rho v squared cosine squared theta times area, right? So let's sum the forces. So this fluid velocity here is going to be causing, here, let me change the colors. Yikes. Um, here we go. Some force up here, F of A. There's a pressure gauge here because this water is moving. It's going to have some pressure across this area too. So say it's FPA and then when I'm doing this fluid up here at point B this nozzle is having a force shooting the fluid that way but remember Newton's equal and opposite forces what does this actually experience well it's going to experience a force going this way that's the force it's going to feel on the cap so if I say that's Y that's X I'm going to have to Okay, my variable's just gone. I'm gonna have some force Fx to hold the cap in place going to the right. I'm gonna have to have some force Fy to hold the cap in place going down. So let's sum these forces up. Here we go. So horizontal forces, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to Fx and then here I have the FB going upwards at angle alpha. So minus FB cosine alpha, which is going to equal to FX, or FX is equal to FB cosine alpha. Sum the forces in the y direction. Well, I'm going to have FA going upwards. Um, plus FPA going upwards, plus FB sine alpha going upwards, as you can see from here, it's clearly going upwards because the nozzle is pointing downwards. And then I'm going to have my resultant force to hold the cap in place going down. And I want it to be stationary, so equals zero. Or that over here equals zero. So FY is equal to FA plus FPA plus FB sine alpha. All right, 
So let's find out what FA is, FPA, and FB. Well, first FA. So F A V A here, so it's gonna be the V dot N aspect of it, it is parallel to the normal vector. So even though it's pointing the opposite direction, remember we're dealing with our coordinate system, so magnitudes, and then your sign gets this the assigned ah, your positive or negative sign gets assigned to this value, force value, depending on where that force is going with respect to our set coordinate system. FA is going up, so FA is positive, even though the dot product will be negative. So VA is parallel to N, so cosine is 1. So I get FA is equal to rho VA squared area of A. FP is equal to the pressure at A times the area at A. If you need to know what VA is, we're given a volumetric flow rate. VA is just simply Q over the area at A. So FB. Well, here, this velocity vector has some sort of angle here, theta, with your normal vector. Therefore, I'm going to have to use this equation here. So this is equal to rho v b squared cosine theta squared area of b. All right, what is vb? Well, remember, the, the flow that's actually leaving the system is going to be the b cosine of theta is again going to equal to the volumetric flow rate over the area at B. So let's plug these in. So force in the X direction, I'll change colors because this is going to be our answer. Here I will go red. Force in the X direction is equal to rho V B squared cosine squared theta. And then cosine alpha going to the right, Fy is going to equal rho v a squared alpha a plus p a a a plus rho v b squared cosine squared of theta area at b times sine alpha going down. So these two forces is the forces in the x direction and the y direction that need to be exhibited on this cap in order to hold it in place. To review, we sum, we able to find the forces on the system by doing the rate of change of the linear momentum, in which case we were able to create an equation for the sum of forces on a system that <coughs> Sorry. Then we did the equation if it was at steady state where any derivative with respect to time goes to zero. Then we did average velocities where there is no integration required. Here we then solved this type of example problem. And through summing all the forces, we found the force needed to be placed in the x direction to hold this cap in place and the force in the y direction to hold this cap in place. Some problems you will get are you have a nozzle here. And you have some plate and this nozzle is going to shoot out water that then goes in this direction and in this direction that's another type of problem you could get where this is going to be some mass flow rate going this way some velocity going that way some velocity going this way and some velocity here v naught and some force being applied now this type of system you would need to analyze your entire mass flow right here so you'd have to go back and use this equation here and analyze it like I showed you how to analyze it in the lesson four system. If you want me to do a tap example type problem like this, simply place a comment in the YouTube video and I will be happy to do a problem like this. Now, as I promised you, if you wanted to do the force of the problem done of the, for the pipe in the previous video on lesson four, you should get, so lesson four, 
force equation. Your sum of the forces should equal the integral from 0 to 1 of rho times 4y minus 2y squared squared times w dy minus the integral from 0 to 0 0.75 of rho v naught squared w dy. Recall v naught in that problem was equal to 16 ninths meters per second. So your sum of forces equation becomes the integral from 0 to 1 rho 4y minus 2y quantity squared w dy minus integral from 0 to 0 0.75 rho 16 over 9 quantity squared w dy. This is all the physics and fluid mechanics for this problem. Everything after this is math. It can be kind of a long integral, so have fun. Um, that is all for this lesson on lesson five. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.